All right, so ladies and gentlemen, welcome back once again. My name is Kay Sam. And of course, in today's video, I have decided to add some more details to make this one quite better than the recent video that I just posted about the release of Virtual TJ 2025. And of course, some of the major updates that it carries. Now, in this one, I'm trying to be, I'm going to try and be slow and then I'll have to try and cover all the details concerning the updates that I have at least experienced. But of course, for the minor updates and the hardware updates, we might not have a look into right now because that won't matter. We are going to look at more about the sampler 2.0 and of course its other part which is the stem swap feature. So make sure you subscribe to the channel. Let's get right in. Alright, so talking about sampler 2.0 which is a major update of Virtual DJ 2024. We're going to start by looking at some of the new sampler banks. As you realize when you update your Virtual DJ to this version 2025, you are going to have new sampler banks. But then you can easily see them when you come to uh, your local music and you'll find it under sampler right here. So you have here a lot of banks right here. Uh, if you don't see this, then that means you have this setting up here. Just come to options and then look, type in sample. So if you don't see your default sampler bank, that means you have this one checked to yes. If it is checked to yes, you won't see your default samples. You'll only see the unlocked ones and then the ones you added by yourself. So turn it to no and then you'll see all the updated sampler banks. So let's try and go over them one by one and see what they means. Uh, my bank here is uh, actually the bank that you use for recording samplers right here. You can record samplers directly to your pads and then use them maybe to swap across the decks or to replace certain uh, parts or elements of a song that is playing on some deck. So when you come to my bank here, uh, we can we can actually look at that. Yeah, so when we, we can come into here, my bank, right? So how these my banks work is that when you click on any of this, it's going to record a song which is playing right now. So right now it is recording, but it's silent. So oh, once you click, it records. The second click on it is going to play it. So if you have to remove it, then you can right click and then you are going to remove that. So let me demonstrate again. We have it deleted, right? So you will see here your recorded banks. Uh, if you don't see them here, like right now, you can check them for like per song. Under per song here, we have some of them recorded. Unfortunately, we deleted them. So let's go back to my bank and then record some. So you play the song and then you're going to record from the part of the song that is playing by the time you clicked on the pad. So we have it recorded. I don't know if you can hear that well. It sounds like that was still the previous one. Let's record it on the second one here. Let's go. Okay, let's try and play it. Alright, so what you can notice here, it's actually only recording vocals. That is because it is meant to record vocals from these pads here. This one records beats down here. But then you can change that, right? So you can come to, I think it's here in uh, record slots. Yeah, so when you click on record slots, after coming to this small dot here, record slots. You can be able to change what you want to record for these parts here. So part one to part 16. For part one was recording vocals. You can actually decide to record a full track, right? Even for part two, you can decide to do a full track. You can change part three to record only the bass, something like that. So you'll go, go and take your time and check through this. So once you have that, the next time you click, it's going to record. Okay, you have it. So it, is, it is actually only four beats. And once you have that recorded, you can actually see it also here under my bank. So why is it recording four beats? Once again, if you come to this dot here and then record duration, you can change it, right? It's set here to four beats. You can also change it to record the loop manually 
or you can change it to follow the loop size. If it is 8 bits right now, if the loop is set to 8 bits, once you click this, it's going to record 8 bits of this. So you can take your time and then check through the record duration. It can be 32 bits, 16 bits, 8 bits, 4 bits, or manually. You can also record a drop, right? You can record a drop. It's going to record as long as you have it on. So that means you're going to play, and then record. So it will wait for you to click again to stop recording. That's going to be like a drop, kind of a DJ drop. So that's about my bank. Audio effects, those are the default ones, the old ones, of course, you know them, the siren, right? Drops. We have some new banks called drops. Hey, yeah, baby, yeah. you're ready for this. We can't hear all of them, right? We also have, I know this. Some of those, you'll try them yourself. Loop masters, of course, the ones that are being used for the swap feature, the sampler swap feature, which we're going to look at later. Then we have videos, also some of this. If we have video, the video enabled. Uh, let me just go to Pro. I have only one hand on this. So let's go to Pro and then enable video just to have this. So we have some of these effects. One, two, three. Counting down. We have that, right? I don't know if you can see it. Yeah, so you're going to try them by yourself, actually. And then you'll have to experience how they feel. First song, like I told you, this goes with your recorded uh, samplers right here. Of course, they follow the song. Once you have this song by Rema loaded up here, it's going to carry along its recorded samples, and then you'll be able to play them right away. Uh, these other ones are actually mine. I just added some of them. So those are the new banks that we have right away. Uh, of course, you can about recording, you can take your time. There will, there will be more tricks coming in. I'm going to explore these and then give you more tricks about recording. So let's talk about something also to do with locked sampler banks. You have them here, right? Let's change to some other locked bank like this. So then you see them locked. So locked here means you cannot delete them or edit them, right? But then if you remove this, it says compressed sample packs cannot be modified. Do you want to make it edit? Do you want to make an editable copy? If you say yes, it's going to create a copy here. And then you're going to be able to edit that. But then you can edit, like you can delete them anytime. So that was max base sampler. We can have max base sampler here, which is the bank that we just created. But then also we should have max base somewhere before the original copy, which is zipped here. So you can delete one of them, just that. So that's about the locked sampler bank. Once again, if it is locked, you can't enable the stem swap feature in it if it is something that maybe you just added by yourself. So for you to enable the swap feature, you should first unlock it like that. And then when you go back there, stems swap can be enabled here. So when you go back to the dot, you will see the stems swap feature is there. Meaning you can now use these banks here to replace certain parts of a song or certain elements of a song. Maybe a vocal, you understand when I say stems. Yeah, so that is how you do it. You can also later choose to lock it. Now if you have it as a stem swap bank, you can lock it. And that is it. So you can pretty much use any sampler. You can add your own samplers, by the way, to use them instead of maybe vocals. For example, I have this sampler that I just added right here. I like, I really like it so much. You know this, right? So you can use this to actually replace maybe a vocal. What I mean is you can turn off the vocals while this sampler is playing. So how you even do that is maybe right clicking here and go to the sample editor, or you can come to this dot, and then say edit in browser, right? It's going to come to the browser here. So when you right click and go to the sample editor, you can now choose to replace vocal. If you want to replace a full track, that means the full track is going to turn off when the sampler is playing, right? But if you say, if you say vocal, it's going to replace the vocals. That means it's going to turn off the vocals and then this will play instead of the vocals of your song. Re instruments or vocal plus instrument will do that. You can choose all these or full track. So, and then you save it, right? You can do that to any sampler, any sampler bank. You can do that to any sampler bank. When you come to the editor, this one here means you are setting what you want the sampler to replace. That is actually more about the same swap feature. We've just found ourselves right into it. And that is it. Now, something again that I want to talk about is you can actually have independent sampler banks on each deck. What I mean here is that when you can see right now, when I change this sampler bank on deck one, 
it is also changing to the same one on deck two. But then you can have independent banks, right? Independent banks for each deck. You can just come to settings and then say, let's type independent and see if that works. Yes, sampler independent deck banks. Check it to yes. So when you have that, that means when you change this, it's going to change only for deck one, right? Deck two is independent. So it's a different thing. It's a whole different thing. There's actually a lot to do with this. Uh, I understand there's a way out. Maybe you can use uh, the recorded sampler here to replace a song that is playing on deck two. I think you can do that by uh, changing it to the master deck. Change the output to the master deck, right? Not to the trigger deck. If you have it to the trigger deck, that means it's going to affect only the deck side of the sampler where you trigger it from. So if you have the output to the master deck here, if deck two, like for now, is the master deck, even if you play it from here, it's going to affect the song the other side. So it's going to replace the song that is that side. All right. So another thing that we might not cover is something to do with the subfolder. I think I'm going to bring it in a later video just for the matter of time right now. I don't want to keep the video so long, but there's something to do with the subfolders also right here. So I didn't demonstrate so much here because I already demonstrated how the stem swap feature works, how you can replace uh, the elements of a song. So I'm going to link that video down in the description down below or on the comments. So you can also check this card and then go watch that video. I just wanted to keep this one updated and have more details than the previous video. Thank you so much for watching after this time. I hope to see you in the next one. I hope you have fun with the latest release of Virtual DJ. Subscribe and turn on that small bell and then leave a like, leave a comment. I'll see you in another one. Peace out.